This is how the Philippines is faring compared to the other ASEAN countries in terms of new COVID-19 cases per million people. Given the scale of the killings and other human rights violations that this report has documented, and given the failure so far of domestic remedies, High Commissioner is calling for an independent investigation. What should we do when we are confronted with great injustice or great evil? The term injustice has long been known to mankind. It is reasonable to suggest that many people are susceptible to such conditions, including those who have experienced war, have few employment prospects, are subject to corrupt government officials, and many others. Why has injustice in various forms continued among men despite long-standing wishes for world peace? St. John XXIII made the decision to write passementaries in which he addressed moral and cultural rights, as well as economic and political rights, and in such response to the persistent existence of injustice across the world. He died two months after it was released at the time of the Second Vatican Council. This is not how things work normally, which shows how important he believed this encyclical was, to be one of his final acts on earth. La lettera encyclica Pacem in Terris sta per prendere le vie ampie del mondo e l'animo nostro, lo si può ben immaginare, è tutto preso da profonda emozione. One of the many injustices that the people had to deal with was the oppression committed by Marxist regimes, under which the USSR had many freedoms while human rights were fiercely repressed. For example, the state has control over all media. Outside media was prohibited in order to avoid ideologies that were deemed as anti-communist. Voting was permitted, but all candidates were chosen by the Communist Party, so there was little choices. Religion was not prohibited, but it was ridiculed and suppressed. Church property was taken away, and religious people were oppressed in a variety of ways including being kept out of positions of authority. That was not the end of it, as these were dark times when religious people faced torture, imprisonment, and even death for religious leaders were common in the Soviet Union. There was no right to use a symbol to achieve political or labor goals. All legal associations were run directly by the state, and they pushed their propaganda. There were show trials held to give the appearance of justice, but the decision was already made before the trials began. Passim and Terrace was written in this context, which is why St. John XXIII emphasizes the dignity of the human person. In the Philippines, various injustices have been raining on our headlines in our everyday lives. One of the root causes of these injustices is corruption. Corruption has been a prevalent issue in the Philippine government and it has been a contributing factor to several societal issues such as poverty, lack of education, and lack of accessible quality healthcare in the country. Majority of Filipinos do not have access to their basic rights such as education and healthcare due to the lack of funding in these sectors and the lack of opportunities brought by poverty and the lack of education. Meanwhile, Several politicians have abused their power and have utilized the public funds for their own betterment, while forgetting the public who have elected them in position. The most cited encyclical in the encyclical tradition is what you are about to witness. See how the wider secular world became interested in a Roman Catholic Church document. While other documents contain powerful principles and guidelines for those of us in the Church, this one drew attention from all sides of the political and secular spectrum. This text is crucial in the encyclical tradition, for it departs from previous documents in terms of style and substance, but at the same time, it builds on previous documents over time. For example, there is no doubt that Passim and Teres elevated the substantial teaching on human rights to a higher level. While Passim and Teres is an encyclical, it is important to discuss its impact in terms of how it led to other documents in the tradition. Passementaris makes three contributions, a substantive contribution, a stylistic contribution, and a structural contribution. 
The distinctive feature of the text is that it is firmly rooted in the thematic idea of human dignity. It is at the heart of Catholic social teaching. John XXIII took that concept and expanded it into a larger structure. It can also be said that passive interest structure is its most long-term significant contribution to the wider Catholic social tradition. It all starts with the dignity of the human person, which takes shape in a set of rights and responsibilities and is asserted in the classical Catholic concept that we are social by nature and not by choice. Therefore, the wider social structure of the teaching begins to take shape as a result of this choice. On a more substantive level, the encyclical letter addresses three issues. First, there is human rights education. Second, there is instruction on war and peace. Third, political scientists would call it teaching on the international system, with a particular emphasis on the international organizations. With all of this in mind, St. John the Donifer's passing in Paris teaches us that while it is acceptable to live our lives as we see fit, we must also remember that we still have a duty to consider the good of others in addition to our own. Whether injustice continues to persist, knowing one's role in the world may be of help to others in eradicating such events.